Ford said, obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. Again, my name is Anisha Freeman. I'm also known as the locksmith because I make keys for locks in the mind. Over 20 years ago, I was one of the most notoriously known drug addicts in the city of Detroit. I made the other people on drugs feel good about themselves. Some of them would look at me and say, if I ever get like that, I'm going to get some help. And I was usually looking at their cigarette lighter to see how much fluid they had in it. See, there was a point in my active addiction when I crossed from abuse into dependency. When the drugs became synonymous with oxygen, it wasn't like, I might breathe today. No, I must breathe today and by any means necessary. That is when the non-negotiable criterion became attached to the goal of getting high. On August the 7th of the year 2000, I was standing in front of a crack motel and I heard a voice deep inside of me say, leave now, right now, or die here. I walked away that day. I had on a pair of shorts, a tank top, and a pair of flip-flop shoes, but I also left with something very valuable. I left with 15 years of experience meeting a goal every day that had the non-negotiable criterion attached to it. When I entered the recovery process, I decided to go to college. I somehow intuitively knew that I would be standing in proxy for people who had been written off as incorrigible. You know, the people that some individuals say cannot be helped. So that meant I had to finish and I had to finish strong. That is when I added the non-negotiable criterion to my education goals. I'm going to share three principles with you that are embedded in a non-negotiable goal. I'm going to compare and contrast how I use those principles in active addiction and how I use them in the recovery process to complete four college degrees. Principle number one, when the goal is non-negotiable, other people's opinions of you, when you're in the pursuit of the goal, become irrelevant. The other people on drugs were not the only ones who talked about me. From time to time, a drug dealer would do a lengthy monologue on what a disgusting piece of trash he thought I was. When he got through talking, I would look him straight in the eye and I would say, can I have one on credit until tomorrow? The whole time he was talking, I was thinking about how he could serve as a resource to help me meet my goal. In the recovery process, I had some excellent professors, some wonderful classmates. I also had some professors and classmates that would share their negative assessments of me with their facial expressions, their vocal tones, and their voice inflections. But I would enter the classroom with the attitude that every person in here is a resource. I'm a resource. You're a resource. We can learn from each other. We don't have to like each other. If we like each other, that's good. But it's not necessary. Not necessary to meet the goal. Principle number two. When a goal is non-negotiable, your feelings about the process become irrelevant. I remember one day in active addiction, I was walking down the street. I had $30 in my pocket. I hadn't eaten in days. I walked past a restaurant that specialized in fried chicken. My stomach was like, please. I said, no. I was able to classify my feelings of hunger as irrelevant because the money was for the goal. In the recovery process, I remember the last year of my second master's degree. I was working full time, going to school, doing an internship and consulting on the side. On certain days, my body would be like, please. I said, no, sleep is not on the schedule. Not tonight. You have a 30 page paper due. 
You might sleep tomorrow, but not tonight. I remember typing a paper once when I had the stomach flu. I had a bucket right next to the computer. See, it wasn't just about me. I was breaking the generational cycle of poverty off my family. Principle number three, when the goal is non-negotiable, you face adversity and opposition with a solution-oriented thought process. There was obstacles that stood between me and getting high. At one point in time, there was a serial killer that killed 17 women in the area where I hung, up, hung out. He was choking them to death. My attitude was, he hasn't met the right one yet. In the recovery process, I decided I wanted to graduate summa cum laude with all of my degrees, straight A's all the way through. But there were some professors that bragged that they didn't give A's. They were notoriously known for grading hard. My attitude was, they haven't met the right one yet. Because I added the non-negotiable criterion to my goals, I have an associate's degree in computer applications technology, summa cum laude. I have a bachelor's degree in business, summa cum laude. I have a master's degree in business administration, summa cum laude. I have a master's degree in social work, summa cum laude. Do you have some goals and dreams? But the requirements seem overwhelming, daunting. I challenge you to add the non-negotiable criterion to your goals. It changes everything. Again, my name is Anisha Freeman. I'm also known as the locksmith because I make keys for locks in the mind. Thank you.